motions at this tournament. Let's tie this to this tournament. At this tournament, we are going to try to test you on a variety of different areas. We'll try to test you on a motion which involves religion, for example. A motion that involves societal change in some way, shape or form. We'll test you on a legal issue. On each of those <coughs> issues, you should be able to find both practical reasons for not doing this thing that we are going to say, like very real world, this is what will happen if you change our world in this way. You should also be able to find some big principles about, you know, it might be rights, it might be you know, when do we do stuff, when do we not. It might be about the liberty of the individual over the, uh, should stand above the state, it might be the opposite. You should be able to engage with both those and your practicalities. To reiterate, I think a good strategy in a lot of debates is to load the first speech with a lot of the big principles and engage with proposition on a principle basis, having obviously given your very clear rebuttal, first to the mechanism and then simple rebuttal afterwards. But leave the deeply analysed and detailed analysis of real-world stuff to the second speech. That's quite a complex setup. You might want to try that, perhaps not at this tournament, but another one. The very simple opposition case, and this is again just I'm going over, the very simple one is one, not going to work, two, with an even if, Not, so even if you have then your negative consequences and then your alternative stroke status quo okay I have status cuck um, This is the really easy one, and then the second speaker will likely bring out further negative consequences, right? That's the bog standard first stop that everyone should be able to do. That will, if you do it correctly, tend to get you at least a second in most rooms. This one, risky, but lots of fun, and it's the sort of stuff that if you, for example, hit an Oxford A, or if you hit in your own language or at this tournament, like one of the really good teams, this is the one where you can engage the other team and strategically force them back by saying, look, you brought us principles, we're going to bring you some principles. We believe that on our principled case, we beat you. Suck them in, make them respond to you on that principle basis, and then say, look, the principle debate we think we've won, here is some really detailed analysis of why we also think that all of that aside, there are lots of negative consequences which are derived in part from our principal case. Incidentally, this really simple one can be made slightly more complex by just slipping in principles in here. So, that's the perf this is the Anat Gelber first op speech, incidentally. It's pr pretty standard, right? Um, is there anything that you guys want to ask until we get kicked out? This is now a question and answer session where you go, I had this motion and I had no idea what to do. Or, I thought we'd won this debate and this judge screwed me over. Why do you think they screwed me over? Shouldn't I have won? This is your opportunity to ask those questions until we're kicked out. One quick yeah. question is, uh, can't first prop also do this? As in the first speaker will give a mechanism, give one practical reason then bring some big moral issues, therefore mm -hmm. giving for the engagement, like, it's yeah. not unique to first up. First proposition, uh, and again, this is part of the paradigm, I think that paradigm is now shifting, so o when Oxford decided to dominate global debating for a while, a lot of people started impersonating them, but impersonating them badly. Um, but the Oxford approach was to go, right, I'm in first prop, and so here are like my, here's my really big principle that I've taken from Spinoza. Uh, with a bit of game theory thrown in for fun. But, like, that I don't think is going to be the dominant um, debating paradigm this year. That's my personal view. But first proposition ideally would have 
a principle onto which it attached its hat. Uh, think of a motion. I, I can't think of a motion where I can't also think of a principle. Like, even if it's uh, this house would, like, uh, this house be believes that England should join the, the European Monetary Union. There's still principles that I would probably want to bring out. They probably like to be economic principles, it's probably going to be boring, but it's not going to be... No, there's also issues of sovereignty and symbolism yeah. and stuff like that, which are principles completely in... Exactly. Do, when you, can, you, do you need to identify boring. debates as being, say, a capitalist debate, a Marxist debate, or like, do you need to know that in your mind? It's like, this is the, my general line of philosophical thought. No. I don't think that it's healthy to, to go in there thinking, right, what type of thought should I have in this debate? What you should be thinking is, what are the underlying assertions, particularly if you're in first on, what underlying assertions are proposition likely to have? And therefore, what underlying assertions am I likely to have as a result? Are they going to clash? If they're going to clash, I'm going to have that debate. If our underlying assertions are identical, it's going to quite likely be a pure consequences debate. If our underlying assertions diverge, that's the debate. Before there are any other questions, uh, actually, are there? I'm, I'm going, there's going to be one thing that I say at the very end, which I, is very important to me about opposition. Are there any questions that you have about what you do in first opposition? 